Does the idea of garlic sauteed mushrooms just sound amazing? What if we throw in some red wine? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if that sounds delicious to you, then stick around to learn how to make garlic mushrooms that are sauteed with red wine and thyme. I really wish that didn't rhyme because it's gonna be so hard to say, but whatever. The best part about this recipe is that it smells so fragrant and delicious and it's gonna seem like you took forever to make it, but it comes together so quickly in a pan on the stove. It's a favorite around here and my husband just loves it. For more tasty recipes, make sure to subscribe to the Sip Bite Go channel on YouTube. You can hit the little bell and that will let you know when a new recipe is available for you. I have so many restaurant style meals coming your way that are so delicious and easy to make at home. Don't forget to subscribe. So let's just right into cleaning the mushrooms to make the sauteed mushrooms with thyme and red wine. So when you clean the mushrooms, um, my recommendation is to use a really damp paper towel and gently brush off the dirt so the mushrooms don't pick up too much moisture from the water. I really don't like to submerge the, submerge the mushrooms in water because then they soak in way too much of that water and they have too much moisture when they go in the pan. See here, in the pan I had been sauteing some garlic, so we're going to start right there. So what you do is add... Uh, two cloves of garlic to a pan on the stove. I usually use a small to medium size pan that has a high edge to keep those mushrooms from jumping out because if you use a frying pan, they're gonna go flying. So anyways, in the pan goes one tablespoon olive oil, one pat of butter, so one tablespoon of butter, and some garlic, two cloves of the garlic goes in, already diced up, and then that all kind of melts in there, and then it's time to add the mushrooms. So the mushrooms have been sliced in halves or quarters. Here they're uh, cremini mushrooms. You could also use white button mushrooms. They're about the same size, and these are actually going to cook really quickly once they get heated. So again, it's using a small to medium sized pan on a stove at medium heat because you don't want to go too high and burn the mushrooms. But this whole time, as everything starts to melt together, um, the oils and the garlic and everything, then added to the mix is that fresh thyme. And this is from my own kitchen herb garden. I have some posts on Sip Bite Go about these herb gardens that I keep in my kitchen. But I just love having fresh herbs on hand to add to recipes like this. And I just throw the thyme leaves in right as everything's cooking because if it was a different herb or if this was going to be cooking for a long period of time, I wouldn't add in the herbs so quickly. But these mushrooms really cook in about five to 10 minutes tops. Um, so it goes by so quickly and you're doing so much stirring as it goes. I'm not worried about the herbs frying out too much. So anyways, it's time to get stirring and mix together this goodness. But I do let it rest and let it sit in place so the edges of the mushrooms brown from time to time. So I might go in once a minute and start stirring everything together at the beginning and then a couple minutes in I'm going to stay on it and just keep revisiting the pan every like 10, 20, 30 seconds to keep stirring them around. And you know, if they're starting to get too browned at different points, you can turn down the heat to medium low, and that's going to keep them slowly picking up all of that flavor. But as long as the garlic isn't turning burnt, as long as it's not getting super brown, uh, then you're good to go keep cooking them. Just like I said, turn the heat from medium to medium low. All right, and it's time for the red wine. So I think one of my recommendations here for choosing a red wine for sauteing mushrooms with thyme and red wine is to choose something that you like to drink, but don't make it too sweet. So here I'm using some Italian blend. Uh, you could really use any red wine that you want. I just wouldn't choose a sweet red wine because then you're gonna have sweet mushrooms and this is really more of a savory dish. So as long as it's not like a port or some sort of like super 
I don't know, super, super sweet wine, no Lambruscos or anything going in here, then you're fine. So I only add about one to two tablespoons of red wine, and these mushrooms are going to pick up all of that flavor. You can't even imagine how good this smells. You just have to put this in your kitchen and try it yourself. Like family members will come out of nowhere out of rooms that they've been buried in for hours and they're going to come out and they're going to be interested in what you're cooking because it smells so good. And really there's only a side dish that takes like five or 10 minutes to whip up. Um, so for a mushroom side dish, this one is really easy. Now, if you don't want to use the red wine, you could substitute red wine with one or two tablespoons of chicken broth or uh, beef broth. I like to keep bouillon in the refrigerator so I can put a little bit of broth together quickly. Uh, you, could, you could just use a little water and season it with something like um, some spices that you like, maybe some Italian spices or something that would be good with the thyme. So anyways, once the thyme and the garlic and the mushrooms are all cooked together to that beautiful golden brown, it is time to plate. As you see, mushrooms really cook down. So this mushroom dish is perfect with thyme and red wine flavors to add to like a steak. Like sous vide steak would be great with this, sous vide chicken or grilled chicken would be great with this. You put these mushrooms on really anything, but as you see, since they cook down, um, you might want to make a really large batch if you're going to be making these and serving it as a side dish for like a holiday or something where you have a bunch of people digging in. But it's really beautiful, just adding a little bit of green for the top. It's kind of nice, even though there is thyme in there and it's going to smell like thyme in the kitchen, to just add a few little leaves of thyme so people can tell that there's that thyme flavoring in the dish. Oh, it's so delicious, and, you know, this is a good use for any cute little spoon you have in the house. Of course, you could just use a dinner spoon, but use any sort of little cute serving spoon for this. It's just going to make the side dish look even more special. Well, don't forget to check out sipbyco.com for the printable directions for how to make these sautéed mushrooms with thyme and red wine. You can also find other recipes that I've mentioned here for things to serve with it in the links below or on sipbyco.com. So, as you see, it is super, super, super easy to make these sautéed mushrooms in a pan on the stove. And it kind of reminds me of a roasted to cherry tomato video that I have. And I'll leave a link for that for you to check out as well. Now, in this recipe, I use fresh thyme, but you can actually use any herb you want. I would make a version of these with fresh cilantro. Ooh, sage would taste so good in this recipe. So use any sort of fresh herb that you want. Mine is just what I have available from my kitchen herb garden. And if you're interested in learning how to make herbs in your home, growing them, I mean, so you can make delicious recipes, check out some of the links I'll leave for you below. So you always have fresh herbs on hand to change up the flavors in your recipe. Head on over to sipbygo.com and you can print out the step-by-step -step recipe to make these garlic sauteed mushrooms at your house. Well, don't forget to subscribe to the Sip By Go channel on YouTube and leave me that comment to let me know if you love mushrooms or if you're making this recipe for the mushroom lover in your life. Well, until next time, I'm Jenna and I hope that you have a and I hope that you have a wonderful and delicious day. Cheers! You'll have to go check out my new cheesy baked rigatoni recipe that's on sipbyco.com. And I also just added a video to the Sip By Go channel on YouTube. It's a really easy pasta dish to make. It actually makes like one and a half or two times the amount here, which means it's really great for making ahead and then planning to have for like two, maybe three nights of dinners if you're not as hungry as we are here. Anyways, check out the recipe from Sip Bite Go. All right, well, it's time for you to check out another Sip Bite Go recipe. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful and delicious day. Cheers!